November 11, 1918 was the last of Canada's 100 days, a series of key battles that ended in German surrender. But winning the war came with tremendous sacrifice, from the first shot fired to the final seconds of the war. The 100 days was an incredibly bloody, difficult period. Private George Lawrence Price was shot and killed minutes before the war was officially over, becoming the last Canadian to fall on the battlefield. Official records note that at approximately 10.50 a.m. on November 11, 1918, 10 minutes before the armistice took effect, an enemy sniper shot him in the chest and he died a few minutes later. Private Price was a conscript. The 24-year-old was working as a farm laborer in Saskatchewan when in December 1917, he was drafted into the Canadian military and sent overseas. Out of the 620,000 Canadians enlisted, Price was one of more than 24,000 troops who were conscripted by the government under the Military Service Act 1917. This act caused riots in Quebec, and for a long time, even those in favor of the draft thought it was too little too late. The Canadians received orders to move from the Arras area. But new research suggests that without the reluctant warriors, Canada would not have been able to mount the 100 days campaign that helped turn the tide of the war. Conscripts had in fact arrived at the front in a case of just-in-time delivery. The Canadian Corps had suffered badly during 1917. 9,000 casualties at the Battle of Hill 70, followed by the staggering loss of 16,000 men from October to early November in Passchendaele. The arrival of new soldiers to the front helped break the logjam in what had become a muddy stalemate. If you didn't have the conscripts, you probably would not have been able to keep the Canadian Corps in the field at full strength. So the conscripts made it possible to continue to fight and to win. Fighting in France and Belgium had descended into trench warfare. A maze stretched from the North Sea to the Swiss border, with the Allied and German armies facing one another across a harsh and barren no man's land of barbed wire, shell craters, mud and death. The casualty numbers just went up and up and up. In early 1918, the situation looked dire for the Allies. Germany launched a series of attacks that pushed the Allies back to within 70 kilometers of Paris. The difficulty for the Germans was that it was very costly. They lost 800,000 men by June or July, and they were beginning to weaken. In that critical time, the Allies turned to Canada for momentum. If you had a tough objective, you put the Canadians in there first. The Canadians had become known as the shock troops of the British Empire. They started the war under British command, but by 1918, they were commanded by a Canadian, General Arthur Currie. Known for their innovation, relentlessness and bravery, Curry's troops gained a reputation as an elite assault formation feared by the Germans. It was the series of battles at the end of the war, the Hundred Days Campaign, where the Canadians spearheaded attack after an attack and delivered victory. There was always a high level of secrecy in the movements of Canadian soldiers. The Germans knew that where the Canadians were, it was likely that that's where the action was going to take place. In advance of a major offensive, the Allies planned in the French city of Amiens in the summer of 1918, Canadian troops were sent north to Ypres, Belgium, to trick the Germans into thinking the assault would start there. But the Canadians were secretly rushed back to Amiens for the real attack. They really tried to create this illusion of the Corps being deployed somewhere in the north rather than further south. At, uh, at Amiens, and it was very successful. Delivered without the usual intense artillery barrage. To further confuse the Germans, there was no preliminary artillery bombardment, a standard at the time that would warn the enemy of imminent attack. The tactics worked. On August 8th, Canada led a surprise offensive and advanced 20 kilometers in just three days. They had enough equipment, they had enough massed artillery, they had enough tanks, they had enough to be able to, to really stand a chance of actually punching a hole in these defensive lines. A German commander referred to the battle at Amiens as the Black Day. The German army was beginning to bend under the strain of four years of war and was closer to defeat than anyone had predicted. But the Battle of Amiens came with a tremendous cost to the Canadians, suffering nearly 12,000 casualties in total. 
After Amiens, the Canadians kept up the pressure. On September 2nd, they smashed through the drocourt Kayant line, which was just in front of the enemy's main defensive line, the Hindenburg line. Curry regarded the battle as one of the finest feats in our history. And once you were able to, to effectively break through the defensive lines that were there, then they started to move further and further back. Fierce fighting continued until the very end. Canadian troops helped capture the town of Cambrai, and by October 11th, they had reached the Canal de la Sense. On November 11th, Canada's 100 days were over, and the Canadian accomplishments were astounding. More than 100,000 Canadians advanced 130 kilometers and captured almost 32,000 prisoners of war and 3,800 German weapons, including machine guns, mortars, and artillery pieces. The Canadians fought an extraordinary series of battles that basically broke the back of the German army in northern France. The final push was not without losses. 45,000 casualties. Some soldiers had volunteered to be there, Others, like Private George Lawrence Price, were forced to be there. Together, their courageous actions helped the Allies win the war and defined Canada as a nation. Whether it was by choice or by circumstance, the actions of those First World War soldiers are still recognized today, the centerpiece of every Remembrance Day ceremony in Ottawa. The War Memorial's bronze statues are called the Great Response of Canada. The warriors are represented by troops of all services passing through a granite arch. The idea was to perpetuate in this bronze group the people of Canada who went overseas to the Great War and to represent them as a record for future generations. There was to be no suggestion of glorifying war. Now the memorial represents all soldiers, sailors and airmen and women who have lost their lives. But the faces depicted here are from the Great War, who we remember especially today on the anniversary of Canada's 100 days that ended the First World War. Thanks for watching Global News. If you enjoyed what you just saw, please like the video. Also, hit the subscribe button on the screen to make sure you get all the latest international news and best trending videos.